Hi, this is Sesh Venugopal. Welcome to part 3 of the lesson on analyzing binary search using comparison trees. In the first part, you saw how to use a binary search comparison tree to determine the number of comparisons for successful and failed searches on arrays of specific lengths. In the second part, you learn how to find the average number of comparisons for success and failure. Now, you'll see how to derive a formula for the worst case number of comparisons to search on an array of arbitrary length n so that, given a value of n, you can plug it into the formula and come up with an exact number for the worst case. Once we have a formula as a function of the array length, we can convert it to big O running time. We'll start with an ideal scenario, such as the one for the array of length 7, where all the failure nodes are at the last level. In other words, all levels except the last contain only success nodes, and the last level contains only failure nodes. We mark the levels with numbers, which will make it easier to do the analysis. The topmost level is 0, the next level down is 1, then 2. We will leave out the failure nodes for now and focus our attention on deriving the worst case for success. Once we get that done, we will return to the worst case for failure. The next thing to do is relate the number of nodes in a level to the level number. Observe that going top to bottom, the number of nodes doubles at every level, with 1 at the root, 2 in the next level, and 4 in the last level. If you think about this for a moment, you will see that the number of nodes increases in powers of 2. Starting with 2 at to the 0 at the root, the next level has 2 to the power 1 nodes, and the last level has 2 to the power 2 nodes. So for a level, 2 is raised to a power that is equal to the level number. The number of nodes in the tree can be computed by summing these powers so that you get a geometric series, whose sum works out as it should to 7. We now have all our ducks in a row and can generalize this to an array of length n, but only those n's for which we have this ideal structure, where the last level that has success nodes has only success nodes. Here are some examples of this ideal tree structure, with the smallest being a tree with only one success node for the array length 1, the next bigger being a tree with three success nodes for an array of length 3. The next bigger ideal tree structure is one with seven success nodes, which we have already seen. Here, you see the next ideal structure in the sequence, a tree with 15 success nodes. I think you get the idea. Next, let's mark these trees with the worst case number of comparisons for success. For n equals 1, the worst case is 1. For n equals 3, the worst case is 3. For n is 7, which we have seen before, you may recall that the worst case is 5. And for n is 15, the worst case is 7. Now imagine an ideal tree structure with leaves numbered, with levels numbered 0, 1, 2, all the way through k. In other words, there are k plus 1 levels. The last level number k is also what's called the height of the tree. It's the number of branches from the root to the lowest leaf. A tree of height k has k plus 1 levels. Remember that we are only looking at successes, so all nodes are success nodes. What is the worst case number of comparisons for success in terms of k? And what are the total number of nodes in terms of k? The examples of the various trees we saw earlier should suggest a pattern. You may want to review them and think of the answers before continuing. Okay, for the worst case, you must have noticed that after the comparison at the topmost level, every descent to another level uses up two more comparisons. This results in 1 plus 2 times k, or 2k plus 1. As for the number of nodes, the summation of powers of 2 goes all the way to 2 to the power of k for a total of 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 1. The number of nodes is, of course, equal to the length of the array, which is n. As you see, 
The expression for the number of nodes helps us get k in terms of n. k is log n plus 1 to the base 2 minus 1. We can plug in this value of k in the expression for the worst case number of comparisons, which works out to 2 times log n plus 1 to the base 2 minus 1. We can double check that this expression holds for the values of n we have seen before. For n equals 1, the log of 2 base 2 is 1, and the number of comparisons works out to 1. For n equals 2, log of 4 to base 2 is 2, and the number of comparisons works out to 3. Similarly, the numbers for n equals 7 and n equals 15 works out to 5 and 7, as expected. We can try other values of n to see what we'll get. But remember that this formula only works for structured trees, that is, for n of the form 2 to the power of something minus 1. So for instance, we could plug 9 in, k in for k in the power, which would give us 2 to the power 10, which is 1024 minus 1. So n is 1023. For this n, the worst case number of comparisons is 19. So at this point, I'm sure you're asking, what happens when n is not the special kind of value? After all, binary search could be done on an array of any size, not just those that are of this particular form. Let's find out by taking an array of size 2. If we plug n equals 2 into the formula, we end up with a log of 3 to the base 2, which doesn't give an integer. I've used 1 point d to show that it's 1 point something, it doesn't matter what that something is. This won't work because the number of comparisons must be an integer. For n equals 2, it should be 3 because the comparison tree has two levels. Now let's look at the values of n between 3 and 7. For n equals 4, the log of 5 to the base 2 gives a real number value between 2 and 3. The same thing happens with n equals 5 and 6, with the log being 2 point something. If we look at the comparison trees for 4, 5, and 6, we see that while they have different shapes, they all have the same height, and the worst case number of comparisons is 5 across the board. So a pattern is emerging. In the table, the second column lists the values obtained by plugging n into the formula, while the last column lists the expected values as evidenced by the comparison tree. The question is, how can we correct the formula? Observe that in the case of n equals 2, we want the 1 point d to be bumped up to 2, so that 2 times 2 minus 1 would give us the expected result of 3. Similarly, for n equals 4, 5, and 6, we want the multiplier to be bumped up to 3, so that we get the expected result of 5. We can make this happen in the formula by applying the ceiling function on the log. If the log is not an integer, the ceiling function bumps it up to the next integer. So for instance, 2.3 would be bumped up to 3, 1.7 would be bumped up to 2, and so forth. You note that the ceiling function has no effect if the log is an integer to begin with, which is the case when n equals 3 or n equals 7 are ideal array lengths. So this is our final formula for the worst case number of comparisons for successful search on an array of any length. You may want to do a quick double check to verify that it holds for n between 8 and 14, which are all the values for n between the ideal values of 7 and 15. What about the worst case for failure? Well, we saw earlier that the worst case for failure is one more than that for success. So it's a trivial matter to rework the formula to get the formula for failure. And finally, the big O. The only term in N in either of these formulas is the one with the log, so the big O conversion gives big O of log N. Notice that we don't write the base. This is because, big O-wise, a logarithm of some base A is equivalent to the logarithm of another base B, 
because one log n to base a can be expressed as a constant times log n to base b, and we never include constant multipliers in Beagle expressions. And that brings us to the end of the three-part series on binary search analysis using the comparison tree. I hope you enjoyed it, and more importantly, I hope you learned a lot. See you later.